<laughs> and I said, yeah, that cancer machine also drops pentatoxin on standing corn. The audience went, oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, farmers are going there on large tracts of land. No killers who have in the past have been accused of spray, spray, spray. And actually, you're right. Poor diversity, no spray. That is changing. We have guys now on large tracts of land. Can you imagine? Do that. Look at that. Producers doing that. Why would they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that? They understand. Oh, yeah. Soil function. They understand. They understand the principles. Look at this. Once we, we go on there, that is corn and soybean. This is a farmer planting corn or soybean into a multi-species cover crop. Why do I get goosebumps? This guy's capturing sun to the last minute. There's nutrient cycling. The water cycle's working on that farm to the last minute. Diversity. That's an eight and ten way mix. Donovan, raise your hand. He's doing that. How many acres did you do that for? A thousand acres. This is spreading all over the country, ladies and gentlemen. It's exciting to see this. Look at our beloved Connecticut, no, Massachusetts. This is Will Rogers. This is this far north, Donovan. They told me farmers can't do this because it's too far north. Look at that. He is rolling the cover and planting no herbicide. Planted side is corn, it popped out, it was beautiful. Nature's armor. The corn pops right out of that armor, just like the forest, just like the prairie. Look at that. Massachusetts. How? You watched our videos. What have I noticed? Until you become desperate and have experienced failure. You're not looking and searching for another answer, just like I was. Look at Wisconsin. This is Tony Barrett. He and I did a class on soil health. He didn't even want to show the slide. I said, Tony, why? Because I didn't want the neighbors laughing at me. I thought that because I'm so far outside, and his yields this year were phenomenal because they got 20 on inches and inches of rain. The whole the neighborhood was flooded. He was able to, because the green cover sucked up the water, he was able to go into his planter and plant. Amazing, ladies and gentlemen, the transformation that's going in our country. It's exciting. Look at this. We're doing it with pumpkins. We're doing it with vegetable garden. We're doing it with tomatoes. We are planting Sierra Rise at Armour. And besides Sierra Rise, Iliopathic through pigweed. We have saved the South, certain parts of the South, and Donovan would agree because he's from Louisiana. Pigweed was taking huge tracts of land and they were herbicide resistant. There was nothing touching Frankenweed. We were able to bring acres back. Sierra Rise. In come back combination with some chemistry. But these farmers no longer use fungicides. I have farmers no longer use fungicides, don't even longer use insecticides. They have reduced their chemical fertilizer by 50 to 75 percent. I got some farmers do not use chemical nitrogen. Oh my gosh, but they use a wicked herbicide once in a while. Hmm. Let's talk about some matter more about disturbance. Chemical and physical. Look at the weed suppression in the cotton field. Do you see weeds? See, a lot of people don't realize how are we going to transition all these acres from conventional into an organic system? How are we going to do that? We're talking millions and millions of acres. How are we going to transition them without having the system collapse on us? And I grew ecology. 
the bridge between here and to permaculture. Do I imagine everybody's going to grow organic and permaculture? Not. It's not happening. But the way the land laws, the way the government works and everything, and all of us in the construct, I don't see it happening. But can I see this happening? Oh, yeah. It's happening now. And millions of acres. We're now 5% of Indiana is healthy. 5%. You say, well, that's not very much. Yeah, in the last three, four, five years, that's pretty phenomenal. I have a county in, in Tennessee, in Tennessee, forty percent covered in less than one year. I'm excited. Now we go to uh, the small scale producers. You can use a two by four. How much horsepower did it take to run the roller? One. <laughs> there's many. There's all scales for this. It's phenomenal. Now we're not only biomimicry in our cropping system, but we're doing biomimicry in running our livestock. We are moving them like buffalo. And guess what the predator we use? The hot wire. We group them tight because of this. I want even manure distribution in my paddocks. Put in your sheep and your animals and let them run them wherever they want. That does not help soil fertility. If you just let them do that's called stock raising. It would take 27 years to cover every square foot with manure and urine if you just let them do whatever they want. But when they group them together tightly, density, not number, density. Right now we are on a high density. Not more animals, high density. Why? Manure and urine distribution. Microbes want that. They want urine and manure. And the first time I hear environmentalists talk about getting animals off the West, I said, you don't understand soil function, do you? In brittle environments, if you do not have herd impact, the ecosystem gets more degraded. The cow and the herbivore, the herbivore and the grass were designed to be together. It's simple. Now that I understand soil ecology, which was not taught to me in in graduate level soil microbiology. <clears throat> We're talking about doing animals like this, folks. Get them tight. So we just bought sheep. Guess what I did? I bought, I put all the external fence, and we're going to move hot wire, and we're going to move our animals like that. That's what I got planned. Now, what has been the biggest problem of promoting this kind of thinking? I'll never forget, I think I was in Pennsylvania. Maybe Aaron, you probably know little Daniel. Daniel was in, Aaron and I were teaching, I was teaching a class, and he was out there and we were digging the soil, and I was teaching Aaron, and Aaron said, in his beautiful German accent, English, very strong German accent, he said, ah, oh, Ray, I got it now. I said, what, Aaron? I know what the problem is. It's the compaction between the ears. <laughs> I said, bless you. God touched your mind there, buddy. You're exactly right. My wife said, your biggest problem, Ray? Look in the mirror. <laughs> She's right. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest issue you're going to have on your operation is the way you think. That's the biggest problem. I see people coming back and bringing their own thought process, their own filters, their own paradigms into an ecological system. I have farmers doing that every time when we switch them over. They want to bring the old. I say, get rid of that. It's a different system. Don't try to bring them. It's apples and oranges. Isn't that a struggle, isn't it, gentlemen? It's huge. And, it, and it's embedded in you. It's in your DNA. Now, please write this down. This is a YouTube video by Dr. Russell Acuff, where he'll teach you how to think in systems. I was not taught systems thinking in college. He's an hour and a half of awesome systems thinking. It is beautiful. It's worth every minute. I, I watched it twice. It is that important for you. If you're going to farm and ranch, you better think in systems. Let me give an 
simple. Audience, please raise your hand. How many of you think that is your car? A picture of a car. Raise your hand. Come on, let's get involved. Make up. Okay, how many of you think it's parts of a car? It's parts of a car. Now, if I jump on that tire and I say, okay, get me to the organic store. I better say organic. I said Walmart, they all do. I was teaching you an example. <laughs> okay, tire, get me to the organic store. Will it get me there? No, it won't. If I got on top of the engine, will it get me there? No, it won't. It's the collective pieces working as a whole make an automobile get me to the car. Get me to the, get me to the store. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the way I was taught agriculture. Fragmented reductionist pieces. So that when I went out there in the field at an early stage of college, oh man, I can help solve problems. I'm lost. I didn't know how the system worked. So I've had to take all the, I've had to read all the ecology books. Any book on soil ecology, every book on ecology, like a crazy person, because I had to catch up. The book that helped me the most was Holistic Management by Alan Sabrin. That was the first book that made me say, you're not seeing things in holes. Connectness. I realized, oh my goodness, and, the, and when I shared that with my peers, they would go, I uh, say no to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah, you're... Uh, I'm sure when Donovan first heard me, Donovan heard me, I had a producer in Oklahoma. Oklahoma is very conservative state, guys. I, I'm doing an organic, no, I'm doing a no-tail conference, and I'm showing my little demos, and I'm excited, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the producers, who is a chemical fertilizer herbicide dealer. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, that's this. <laughs> His name is Kent Watkins. Has now become a very close personal friend. He said, Ray, when I heard you, he says, I reached over with my friend that I came in the, in the truck with. That man should say no to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. Then he said, yeah, what changed you, Kim? I said, when I saw you do those demonstrations, it got me. I said, I've been doing no till and I was losing my operation. He's now spent $500,000 of his money and bought a, made a cover crop seed plant, and he helped farmers switch to more of an agroecology system. One talk. I learned, don't judge your audience. He changed completely, and he invested $500,000 of his money. That's incredible. Let me show you how we do conservation. Let me show you what is going on in the country, ladies and gentlemen. As a conservationist with NRCS for 30 years, what I did is we we promoted patchwork. You'd come into the office and say, what, you want a butter stamp? Do you want a cheeseburger with it? <laughs> it's almost like you were, you were spending money and you were doling things out. Do you want a filter strip? Do you want a bright green corner? Do you need a grass waterway? Do you need a windbreak? They're all cool. Please, we need those. In fact, I kind of make this demonstration. If I do a little insect and I put it up there and I go, <laughs> what does it die of? Ladies and gentlemen, lack of space. <laughs> <laughs> we need those practices. We need the space. But how do we do something more powerful? You see this picture here? This is the soil in a tilled system. No aggregates. This has no aggregates. Look at that. Very little aggregates or microaggregates, but it doesn't have mega and macro aggregates. Tillage does not destroy the micro aggregate, but it destroys the mega and the macro. And those are the ones we need for infiltration. Very critical. Now, where is the soil working in that picture, ladies and gentlemen? Right on the grass waterway. Right on the riparian where there's continuous cover. Here you have spilled sun, leaking nutrients, 
no aggregation. So what we've done is done a patchwork job throughout the country. And so then the temperatures on those soils get so hot, they send these hot plumes and has disrupted the water cycle. The temperatures get 120, 140 degrees, and it changes the climate. It's called the diminishing of a small water cycle. 40% of our water comes from the small water cycle, plant and soil respiring and cooling. 60 comes from the ocean. Huge, important understanding. If we want to fix it, cover it. Can you imagine if we had this whole country covered and our rangeland were restored? Huge difference. Now, when we talk about fertility, please understand spontaneous order. I went to go take my uh, the aquarium down in Springfield, Missouri, and they had these multi-million dollar beautiful aquarium. And when I saw that, I go, wow, spontaneous order. Ladies and gentlemen, there's spontaneous order all around you. In our soil ecosystem, spontaneous order. There's order there. It's once you start looking at things differently, it changes everything. Because then you're dealing with an elegant universe. Let me show you the patterns. Start learning about nature's patterns. Look at this right here, the Death Star. Look at the human eye. Pattern. Look at the similarities. The universe and the brain cells. See, once you start thinking this way, there's no return. And it's beautiful. The formation of the universe. Neurons under your brain. Look at, look at the patterns. The Milky Way, the hurricane. Look at, look at the patterns. It's gorgeous. I, this... Once you start going down this ecological view, everything changes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I was taught in college. You see these three concentric circles are all evenly sized? That shows that they're all equally important. And in the middle here, you have organic matter, the nexus of soils, the beauty of it. I used to think, that is correct. I have completely changed my mind. They are not equal value. They have never been equal value, and they will never be equal value. See, ladies and gentlemen, it's biology that builds the structure and the glues and holds the particles together. They fuse it. It's the biotic glue. They make the organic matter that regulates the chemistry. Biology reigns. It always had, it will always be that way. Case in point, Earth, Mars, chemical physical. Earth, chemical physical. What's the difference? Powerful. One of the things I try to convey to producers, your job is to facilitate life, not death, not the sites. See, if you want to be fair about it, we should add two tillage to each side. <laughs> They're all sides. They diminish. They kill. We'll talk about that in a little while. Show how powerful again. How many have actually seen a picture like that and observed? You've seen it, right, Jim? Have, have you ever been able to explain that? I've never explained that. Now, I tell producers, you know why I show them that? I said, oh, producers, that's a compaction issue. <laughs> <laughs> and how do farmers fix it? Tillage. Come on, bring out the tillage machine. we got to fix it. In fact, if you want to see a really good research replicated study, write this down. Ohio State Compaction Study. <clears throat> it's on YouTube. What they did is they took trials, they, they purposely used a grain cart and compacted these heavy clay soils. They did it, one with no-till, and they were all no-till, but they purposely compacted them. One, they put cover crops, and the other one, they used tillage to fix it. Who won? Tillage! No. The cover crops did. 
they planted a crop the following year, corn yields were higher. Here's the point. How does this plant survive this? These plants are heavily mycorrhizal. These fungus can excrete powerful enzymes that dissolve rock. Bacteria dissolve rock. Oh, wow. See, Ann's husband's a geologist. He has come to the light of biology. <laughs> David is wonderful. Love David. Look at the power of life because he appreciates the geology, but he also appreciates the biology. How many have seen that? I've seen that. And I'm like, whoa. Uh, now, this is, a, this is Australia. That is a calcium carbonate seabed. How would you think your farm rock? <laughs> <laughs> I live in southern Missouri and I got a lot of rock. No, my, my farm's rock. That's why I can afford it. But I'm okay with that because I understand the power of life. Look at the darkness on the top. Awesome, once you understand it. Now, now I want to talk a little bit about disturbance and how powerful we need to understand disturbance. Now, how many are were born uh, after 86? Raise your hand. Okay, so some of you are not going to know what we're going to talk about. Maybe you do. Okay? Yeah, you could tell them how old I am. I was 25 years old when that happened. How many of you remember the Ukraine when Chernobyl blew up? What did they tell us, Glenn? What did they tell us? It was when there was a disaster. It, yeah, forever. Forever. The scientists sit there on top of their bed. It's a disaster. It's forever. I remember that day. Was, we were all frightened. And these plumes, your toxic uranium, were going to come all over. In fact, eight kilometers all around it just nuked everything, killed all the trees, animals, humans. It was a disaster. Whole towns and cities were. It was frightening. I remember that day. Look at it now. Animals, birds coming back. Don't you consider that a disturbance? In fact, I would argue Chernobyl has more way of healing than our agriculture fields. Why? It's getting recovery from man. I don't worry about the planet. I don't worry about the planet at all. You remember when all that oil was spewing out in? Remember that? In the Gulf? Oh, it's an ecological disaster, blah, blah, blah. All that carbon spewing out. What have you heard more about it? Here's my point. Nature is incredibly resilient. It can handle acute stresses. Just like your body. But a system cannot handle chronic stress. Let me explain that a little further. It has ability to recover. What do we do in our fields in agriculture? We're continually tilling them. We're continually putting fungicides. We're continually putting salts on it. We're continually spraying them. Chronic, 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 chronic stress. If you want to get sick, don't sleep, eat bad food, hang out, drink all kinds of copies of alcohol, and do other things, you will get sick. The ecosystem's the same thing. It can recover. So look what it's coming back. So then what happens sometimes, and I was guilty of it too, is that, oh my gosh, you killed all oh, that's terrible. Oh my goodness, you used wicked roundup. Oh my gosh. And then there's judgment going back and forth. And the system going, really? What I'm trying to teach you is manage the disturbances. We'll show you those who manage their physical, chemical, and biological disturbances are having incredible soil health systems. This is what I want you to appreciate. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous little water bear. Look at the elegance. This is what's happening between us and the bottom of our feet. In our water systems, soils are subaquatic ecosystems. It's a water bear, awesome critter. They've been at an absolute zero and still survive. Nature is elegant. It's beautiful. It's cool. <laughs> cool, isn't it? Now, this now before we 
go on to nutrient cycling, I want to show you what happens when you see a diminished water cycle. To fully appreciate the potential runoff and erosion from a conventionally tilled field like this, you really need to be out here during the most intense thunderstorm of the year. Since most people aren't willing to do that, here in Virginia, we use a rainfall simulator to help our farmers tell the story of what happens when it rains really hard. How many have seen this demonstration? Good. I'm glad because I want to make sure that most of you have not seen my conferences. You give me one of these and let me loose from the country. Dry, loose soil taken from a clean till field. On the right, we start with a slice of intact surface soil from a long term no till field. This soil is not only protected with a mulch of cover crop residue, it also has a stable, porous, sponge structure. You know, years ago as a kid, I remember, you know, you get these these big heavy thunderstorms in the summer and it would just it would just wash the field and you'd end up with, with mud down the road. And I'm talking about mud that you go over there with a the skid loader and scoop out of the way so the cars can go down the road. What I'm seeing now is I'm seeing these heavy rainfalls and I'm barely seeing a trickle coming out of the field. After we simulate an extremely intense thunderstorm for five minutes. The differences are obvious. Most of the water we apply to this soil has run off into this jar, carrying away with it a thin but very significant layer of topsoil. We just applied an inch and a half of very intense rainfall to this bare tilled soil. Water Obviously, we harvested very little for future plant use. Meanwhile, this no-till soil has absorbed virtually every drop of water we apply. What little ran off is clear. The bottom line is pretty simple. If you want to harvest more rain like these no-till farmers are doing, keep your soil covered on top and make it a sponge underneath. Okay, now, let me explain how that happens. Just totally counterintuitive. How many of us were taught if you tilled the soil, water would increase infiltration? Raise your hand. All of you should raise your hand. <laughs> all of you were taught that way. I did too. I till it, get it more fluffy, water's going to enter. We all taught. What actually happens is you wake up bacteria called R strategies. They are innate in our solar ecosystems. You wake them up, you infuse oxygen, you wake these prolific organisms, they start consuming the biotic glues. They start consuming every biotic glue, call, you call it organic matter, I call it these super molecules, they get consumed, then the clays and sands no longer hold up in space, they collapse. So the first act of erosion is downward, because the silts and clays plug it up. There's no more glues to hold it. They were consumed by biology, and then when the microbes die and consume all the house, you prime the soil, they release nitrate, and then you wake up the weeds. I had a rancher in Montana said, Ray, please not stopping killing, because when I disc, I release a flush of nutrients, and my plants look greener. And I said, yeah, you burn the house down to warm up a hot dog. <laughs> Turn the grill on. <laughs> so when we, we're thinking about tillage, we have to be careful. Did you hear me say not to do it? Did you hear me say that? Did, it? did I? Did you hear me say not to use chemicals? I didn't say that, did I? I want you to have wisdom and understanding. That's what this is about. But look at Dr. Wayne. Let's make it very clear. This should have been put out in my ag school. All tillage tools destroyed. All of them. I don't care. I'm sorry. The moment you move into that space, you disrupted it. All tillage tools decrease water infiltration. All tillage tools decrease organic matter. Some producers say, well, Ray, I till and I keep building all this organic matter. Yeah, it's because you haul it in. You destroy aggregates, those labile glue, they're gone. All tillage tools increase wheat. Documented research, it's been known. Let me give you an example. This is an organic field in Pennsylvania. The only thing that separates these two fields is the management. These are same soil types. This is an organic farm. 
I call this ecological farming. This guy rolls cover crops, he's no-till, and he uses a gradual herbicide. They both do a disturbance, physical disturbance, chemical disturbance. Look at the difference in the soil. This one has a crust, this one does not. Where you have armor, there's no crust. Even no-till will crust if there's no armor, no skin. You need that skin. How about our grazing? This is when you let the cows go just do whatever they want. This is when they, you orchestrated them in synergy, in synchrony, in biomimicry, mimicking the buffalo, called regenerative grazing, they call it. Look at the infiltration rates. Those biotic substances, those biotic glues keep the pore. Now, it's important to understand those glues only last 27 days. That means they're always being eaten, consumed, made. So you've got to manage your grass systems correctly. You've got to manage your tillage. Those glues are important. Now, here's what I use for an acronym for disturbance. I use, I call it FIST. And the reason I call it FIST is because this is what we do the natural system. We are in charge. We're going to control you. We're going to force you. So you'll never forget that acronym. Frequency of your disturbance is critical. Understand the more frequent you disturb, the more you hurt the system. The more intensive your tillage, the more you hurt the system or your chemical spraying. And the more toxic your chemical intensity, scale, this is a big one. Did you disturb this one acre or did you disturb the whole farm? Makes a huge difference in how you do business. Let me show you how people do IPN, integrated pest management. They do it like this. Now, James, I want you to take chemo just in case you get cancer. <laughs> That's the way we do pest management. Right, Donovan? It's like this. Producer calls the co-op. I have another egg of army worms. It comes and sprays. You know, it might spread to the next one. I want you to spray that field. Didn't scout the next field. Or didn't discount the whole other field. But he sprayed the whole farm. Then the neighbors hear about it. Then they spray the whole county. Am I wrong, Donovan? And they caught all the seed. And they, they were drowning in these chemicals. Scale is critical. And the other one is timing. When do you do your disturbance? For example, if I, was, if I had to till, I would till when it's colder, not warmer. Why? Come on, guys. Microbes. When they're cold, they're going, Understand, once you understand what's going on in the system, then you know how to manage your disturbances and careful with it. These are disturbances. They're stressors on the system. That's a salt. All these things. But you never hear me talk in front of a large group of producers. They have never heard me. And all of a sudden I said, oh, this is terrible. And that one's terrible. I've lost my audience. But if I teach them, changes everything. I connect with them. Teach them how to understand their, their tools. Look how destructive the tools are. Costa Rica, look at the diversity. South Africa, Iowa. <laughs> Understanding the system. Now, if I hurt the mycorrhizae through too much tillage, I affect the springtails. If I affect the springtails, I affect this organism, affect that organism then I diminish the internal nutrient cycling. See, here's what I want you to remember. Here's the principle I love, the principle of one. Theology says everything is one. Ecology teaches everything is one. Quantum physics teaches everything is one. Why do you need to understand the principle of one? 
So when you go out there and you start doing something crazy, I hope your wife gets a drink later done before you go to the tractor, take him down, bring him to the house. <laughs> Do you know I have come to realize it is not race, it is not age. I think up ecological principles. I, it had nothing. I seen a seventy-one-year-old man sit here, convert his whole farm in one time, and a thirty-eight-year-old man not get it. But one thing I have observed: the females, beautiful women, pick it up first. Yeah, girl. <laughs> I was told to say that because I had three dollars and a wife. <laughs> Now, they get it first. Army's nurturing. I'm a dad. I nurtured my daughters. So what happens to us men? We get on there behind a tractor, right, Donovan? And go, oh, yeah, we're stopper. <laughs> we go crazy. I don't know what happens to us. Now, here's the thing, guys. I'm going to show you an indicator. I call weeds nature's healers and respond, first responders. Weeds are not our enemies. It's hard for somebody like to stand a weed, right, Donovan? Man, I, for a long time, and the ground is, ooh, I get chased. I changed. There's a great book called, write this down, called Guardians of the Soil by Dr. I can't remember the professor. Great book called Guardians of the Soil, so you understand what you're dealing with. If you're overgrazing, the first healers and the responders will come up. If you're killing too much, you are you are going to have problems with weeds. That is going to be your problem. They're indicator species. They're healers. They're trying to go into the soil, bring up trace minerals to start the healing process. Please understand, if you're having those problems, you're doing too much disturbance. Okay? So, let's go on here. Now, we're going to go into a... Now, we're going to go into the soil test. Because I want to make sure I have plenty of time for that. Let's see, we got... Because I have a tendency of having too much fun with you guys. And let me just make sure that I cover enough. Let's go right here. Where do we start? You guys already feel comfortable. I, I, did, I think I can tell you about the biology. I think we can switch. Okay, let's go right here. I just have way too much fun. This is like a three-day class trying to teach you an hour and a half, so it's not right. Okay. Let me show you what we what we learned. It's called the inorganic based soluble state as an agronomist. We were taught this in college. This is the current model right now. Inorganic based soluble state. It's what it talks about is if it rains, you get the soil solution, that water comes in interface with the minerals, and these minerals and these cations start flowing by themselves, going into the it's called interception by the roots, mass flow through the water, and diffusion between the interface of the water and the minerals. Oh, I was embedded with that in graduate level soil chemistry. Because of this current lifeless model, we have lost 40 to 60% of our NMB. We have, we have soils that are bare four to eight months out of the year, and we have decoupled the carbon nitrogen phosphorus cycle, and we have become more sickly. We have less nutrients in our body because of this model has really hurt us. Now, if you want to notice about the correct model, right, Dr. Drinkwater from Cornell, she's got the ecologically based model. Every piece of literature you can get from her, read it. She gets it. In fact, she created that thought. Yes. We're, so we're working on an organic mineral pool model controlled by the microbes. It's biochemistry dictates inorganic chemistry, ladies and gentlemen. Dictates changes everything. Organic matter buffers the system. Biochemistry, powerful. Let me show you bioturbation. So what I do is I promote bioturbation. On the left is you have um, just bacteria and fungus. This is how slowly it would decompose with just bacteria and fungus. Now you have the earthworms and all the biological critters, the mesofauna, the macrofauna, all these beautiful organisms, all these Oh, Granger's in. Oh, look at them. Now, what happens if you come in with a plow? And then you don't want that nutrient cycling? Because they're 90% of nutrient cycling, ladies and gentlemen. 
Oh, but I just couldn't run the list. But I only just sat on drugs. You nuke that whole process. Whether you spray insecticides, in the fungicides, you hurt that system. 90% of the nutrient cycle is biological. Okay. Every, Texas, we got Texas. Everything's big in Texas. Jim's from Texas. Go, yeah, we do everything big. This is a producer I worked with, uh, Ronald uh, uh, Mr. Reagan, John Reagan. He um, did believe me. He said, "You're a drug ray. I'm going to take the worst field, and I'm going to disprove you wrong." Went to no till covers. Now he has earthworms like that, and he no longer goes out by himself at night. They will take it down. There's, look at this right here. This is beautiful. This is the. This is a. Um, uh, Special camera at night that can actually see at night. It's by Odette Minard from Canada. For no chills, not supposed to work. Look at these earthworms, what they're doing. I even did special music just to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I get emotional every time I see that. Look at this. They are farming, ladies and gentlemen. They're taking those giant leaves, putting it in the wormhole, and then they're letting the fungus and bacteria work in them, and they're here from the bacteria, and protozoa, and then they come back and back with their eat biology. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Oh. That's, now, if you have residue problems on your farm, you have biology problems. Throwing chemical fertilizer is not going to fix it. Throwing, give it living roots. Now, does that change the nutrition? Look at this. They've done plastic molding, and they have some kind of molding, some kind of and they put it into the wormholes. Look at the infiltration rates change. Bioturbation. People want to put lime on the top of the surface. I go, but I gotta mix it. I gotta plow in my residue. No, you don't. Let the bioturbation take care of it. Doesn't need you. You get in the way. Now, geology. This is geology, sand, silt, and clay, mineralogy. This is the secretions of life and death. That's what I call organic matter. I hate the name organic matter, and I'm just going, I hate that name because really, to me, organic matter is this. It is super molecules created by, oh, by life and death. Somebody died, somebody secreted, somebody gave up its blood. Something died in this whole biological process, coated all these clays and sands to create these biotic substances that have memory. We don't even know some of these molecules. It is powerful. And I also call it energy flow. This is the energy flow that we want in our farm, ladies and gentlemen. Now, because of time, let's go back to the Haiti test. Because I got too much to cover. You have knew that. 14. 14 minutes. Good. Total. Total. Okay. Now, we have a new test. A new soil test that's based on biomimicry. I was so excited when I first met Dr. Rick Haney. Because I was going all over the country and I knew our fertility was off. I knew our soil test was way off the measure. Nitrogen and these other tests. We now have a test. It's totally different from the conventional soil test. Now, please, when some people hear about the Haney test, you're going to hear from the academic world, oh my gosh, it's not, it's not calibrated. That's not the test, blah, blah. That's what you're going to hear. And I say to them, do not compare the Rick Haney test from ARS, USDA, a government lab, with a conventional, antiquated, old test. They are apples and oranges. Do not correlate them. One is based on water and rooted juice. The other is based on caustic acid. Let me go down this path and show you. Haney's test is based on green chemistry, biomimicry, molecules. What an amazing soil scientist. He woke up one day and said, hey, what if we use nature's assets 
Or why don't we use her solvent water, micro swimming water? That's their environment. Why don't we just let nature speak to us? One is a form of humility, and the other one is let's force the answer. Let me show you. <clears throat> Rex Tash uses three acids acylic, malic, and citric. Three common acids in most roots. Our old test, sulfuric acid, ammonium fluoride, ammonia, and all these caustic acids, forcing the answer off the exchange site. And then when he brought this up to get literature review, but it's too simple. This test gives me the answer. I call it the blood sample of the soil. Why do I call it that? Ladies and gentlemen, now, I don't know if we all realize, but the most powerful test that we have in the medical field is the blood sample. It is passive. It is one way where the human body speaks to the doctor. Why is it so powerful, guys? Why is the blood sample so powerful? Come on, turn that in the coma. What is that? It's alive. Yeah, because the blood, there's life in the blood. I can tell endocrine function. I can tell hormonal function. I can tell a lot about you and what's going on in your function of you because you're a complex system. Ritz test is the same way. What he does is when you take a soil sample, he re-wets it with water, it fills up the pores, and then he goes, sucks up all the organic molecules and runs it on a very sophisticated water analyzer. This test measures seven parameters. The groceries, extractable organic carbon, the efficiency of the microbes to eat the groceries, extractable organic nitrogen, inorganic, the rate, uh, inorganic N and P, and it tells you something incredibly important, carbon and nitrogen ratios. When I say carbon and nitrogen, do not separate them. Nitrogen microbes need it to process the groceries. When I say water soluble carbon, groceries. I'm going to explain that in a little while. And then CO2, salvita, that's the respiration of the microbes. Right now, all of us are respiring. The more microbes, the more there's usually more food. Inherently richer soils. Let me show you. In this research, this was done in the, this research has been done for a long time ago. And Rick picked up on it. See this little, little spike here? This is called the one-day CO2 respiration. Scientists knew for a long time that when the soil gets wet, the microbes explode in population and they just start to respire like crazy. The higher the fertility of the soil, look at the fertility of this soil, less fertile, wetting and drying. These are natural processes happening all the time. Look at the Lubbock soil, but look at the fertility on this one. The spike went up. A lot of us see our plants, remember when after a rain? And you see that green up? What did you think it was? How many thought it was lightning and water and nitrogen in the water? Rainwater. Microbes respiring, getting their Think about the water answers. They're in this hibernation state. Water comes in. All of a sudden, they explode in population. They're eating groceries. And they're populating like crazy so quickly. And they're swimming in this aquatic. He's now using this very sophisticated water analyzers. We're using them and we're measuring the CO2. Now, because of my limited time, how much time do I got? Um, eight. Eight minutes. Okay, we'll get to the punchline. Here. <laughs> right here. Perfect. Okay. These are the very sophisticated water analyzers. Very complex machine. They do not, he does not use soil analyzer uses water analyzers. They're more sensitive. They can pick up all these molecules. So, this is the difference. Organic matter. If you have 2% organic matter, that's 12,000 parts per million carbon. Organic matter in general is the construct. It's the building. Not all carbon is the same. This is the grocery. His test measures the groceries in the soil. This pool of carbon is 100 times smaller than the total house. 
it's smaller. It's, this is what we pick up. So if I know how much groceries I have, I know how much work I'm going to get out of you in nutrient cycling. Cool. Now we can get close in predicting how much work I'm going to get out of you and how much cycling is going to occur. And I'm going, yes, because we've been so far off. Now, let me give you an example. How many have seen a 12% organic matter soil? 14 bog soils, right? How many have seen bog soil? How much cycling goes on a cam uh, on a very heavily organic matter soil? Is there any growth in those systems? In the bog? It's anaerobic. But everybody, what does everybody brag? Well, I got some organic matter. I got bunches of organic matter. Like something you want on your chest. I mean, the target's not the organic matter, ladies and gentlemen. The party is at the groceries. You can live in a 5,000 square foot home and eat hot dogs every day. Life sucks. <laughs> so don't equate always organic matter with water soluble nutrient cycling. I'm all about the cycling. I like the house, don't misunderstand me. Because we're picking up all these molecules now. When they break down into all these complex molecules, we have the ability to pick it up with this test. Let me show you the, the practicality of that. Then this is pretty cool because then you'll see how I can show you the difference in the test. Right here. Five more slides because I know that Glenn's going to cut me off. Come on, you're out of here. Okay, let me show you what happened. This is a case study that we did. Mississippi, right close to where Donovan is. Not too far, but this kind of area. Hot, humid, very sandy soils, about 50, 60 inch precept. Let me show you this column here. We're comparing because one of our soil scientists said, wait, how do I get farmers to do this? How do I get a benchmark? How do I compare it? What do I do? I said, look, what you do is you get a good old poor no-till fill, or regular, I call all no-till, just corn and soybean poor, conventional tillage, no-till and cover crops, pasture and go to the forest. Okay, she did that. She collected all the samples, same soil types. Now, the, everybody has a commitment. The typical soil test is this orange column. Rick's also measures this. It's called nitrate nitrogen. Okay? Nitrate nitrogen. So just this is the conventional soil test right here. Now, Rick's is also here plus here is this. Now, if you want to get a soil test, Regular soil test, you would only have 11 pounds of animal. <clears throat> With rich test, you only not not only you pick this form of nitrogen, but you pick up the organic forms of nitrogen, which plants can take up. Then you have this plus this. Rick's test says no, you have 27 pounds of animal. Conventional tillage, those are pretty close. Now look what happened, folks. With two years of cover crops, just two years. The organic pool went up 50, up to 50, plus 2, 52 pounds of animal. You don't have just two, you have 53. Let's say you find 1,000 acres. Is that a big difference? It's huge. <laughs> now, how many have ever taken a soil sample in a pasture or a forest? Raise your hand. Okay, do you guys remember how the nitrogen level came in? Was it high? Or was it low? I'll give you a hint. It was low. It was always low. I said, well, how can they keep growing all the grass? How come the forest is so big? Oh, I get it. The koa is fertilizing the night. <laughs> We've been missing this huge plant, guys. 75 plus 4. Same thing here. The forest has 81 pounds. It doesn't have 11. This biomimicry test changes everything. And then we do a soil health score. It takes all those seven components. You have to look at them all together. <coughs> Five.
five plus, look at these scores. These are really unhealthy soils. Seven and below is on a, it's not good. So when you get the hay, you have to ask for the Haney test. You have to ask, and I'll show you where. Okay, you have to ask specifically. There's 16 labs doing it now. It's going spreading all over globally. But there's only one lab right now that I feel super comfortable because they talk to each other all the time. And that's, I'll tell you that in a little while. Look at the soil health score of these two systems. Look at the system change after two years of covers. The soil health score all more than doubled. Two years of covers. Do you see how powerful covers are? And then now empirically you can test that. With that test, I can tell you, I've never been on your farm. I can tell if it's CRP. I can tell if it's pasture. I can tell if you're killing it. Been working on this for six years. Our goal is to teach you guys and to empower the producer. Let me show you the last comparison. This ties in the disturbance, the biology, the soil health score test, everything. This is Dave Brown, a good friend of mine. He's my business partner. We started this school called Soil Health Academy. He's gonna, we're going to show you the uh, four producers very close by that have the same soils. Let me show you the difference in this system. This is an organic, high-diverse system. This is a picture of a soil... Organic, lots of tillage, but lots of diversity. Great crop rotations, good rotational diversity. Does that soil look good? How many would say it's good? Really? How about that layer, compaction layer in the crust from the top? That's not good. That's horrible. How about this one? No till low diversity. Does it look the same? Rust, compaction layer, very low diversity. How about the medium diversity and high synthetics? Look at the layers on that. You want crumbs like chocolate. I mean, like um, cottage cheese. That is not cottage cheese soil. That's brick. Look at these. That's what you want. Cottage cheese. Okay, what's the difference between these? Integration of animals, multi-species diversity, no-till, animal integration. He does all of it. Oh, and he uses a herbicide once every three years. And we're trying to shut it down. So what are we trying to show you with this thing here? This test, and look at the numbers. Hey, We've accomplished all this with zero added fertility, microbial foliars, other input added to the system with the exception of seed and a small amount of livestock mineral. That is it. Okay, what was the soil health scores? Okay, the soil health scores, the organic, these are not, this is the water acceptable part, but this is the groceries. The score on the organic was 7.2, he doesn't have it up there. <coughs> The no-tills were 7.6, Gabe's was 58. The, usually the range is 0 to 50. What am I trying to say to you? Careful with your disturbances. If you do all the diversity and do all the cover crops and you do so much tillage, you cancel and you gain all the benefit. If you spray like a crazy, and no diversity, you cancel out the benefits. Manage your disturbances. Look at the water soluble carbon in the organic. There was more groceries in the no-till and the synthetic, high synthetics. Look at <clears throat> gauge. 1,095 parts per million of groceries. If you trip on that soil, they will decompose you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the fertility levels. No fertility added. None. All he did is made it available. The our soils, ladies and gentlemen, are carbon limited. That is the biggest problem we have with our soils. They're carbon limited. Zero time. Look at 
ladies and gentlemen, I hope, uh, I guess we can show you the last slide. So you'll let me redo that. And make me. And um, I'll leave you with a little bit of hope, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Adam Chapel. He's in Arkansas. You know Adam, don't you? Adam? He lives in Cotton Plant, Arkansas. This young man is a fourth generation. There he is. And this is the most beautiful story. He says, Ray, I said, Adam, why did you shift? Eight? This young man farms 8,000 acres. Wrap your way around it. 8,000. He is a, he is a Eden of green surrounded by an ocean of brown. I said, Adam, what made you cover all your soils? <coughs> what did you do? And he says, Ray, I watched your video in the brand's YouTube. I said, you mean you watched YouTube videos and you believed it? <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's kind of like the centurion telling Christ, don't come to my house, I'm going to go war me. Just say it is, I believe. What an incredible thing. I said, well, what caused you? He says, Ray, we were failing. We were bleeding. My natural blood. I could see we had three, four years left. His knee was covering us. We couldn't stop it. And he said, but what did your, because he got a degree, he's got a master's in entomology. And I said, what did your entomology professor say when you did this? And you covered 8,000 acres, went to no till, multi species cut across. Now he's thinking of bringing sheep into the operation. In Arkansas? <laughs> he goes, well, what did your professor say when you got all that diversity? He goes, he told me, he said, because his professor said, Ray, I'm just, and he told him, Adam, I'm just waiting for you to go broke. All the insects and all the pests are going to eat your yard. And I said, this man is an entomologist? Because usually entomologists are the first one to find out there's problems. <laughs> they understand these ecosystem. So what, how did you respond to him? He says, he told his major professor, he says, see, my brother and I do our own field research. We don't get our money from Monsanto. The professor got quiet. But let me leave you with this. Using the game test, biomimicry, covers, this young man used to borrow He now borrows 2.7. He said, Ray, I'm going to have my dad paid off in a couple of years. We're going to pick vegetables. We're going to do, we are going to regenerate. I am so blessed and excited, ladies and gentlemen, that we are all part of that. And then he talks about nutrient density. We're all beginning to bring and tie all that, and we want healthy food. Now, some of you here, what can we do to enhance this soil health movement? First thing that you guys can do, you guys leave here. I want you guys to think about it. It's those who live in the city, go have a garden. Get connected to your soil. Teach your kids. Connect it. The two things I see that's happening in our country right now is destruction and disconnect. Let's bring our people in. Let's attach them back. Let's not be so distracted. In your dollar that you buy and that you need, and I really appreciate every one of you because you are very special because I know you it cost you money to be here. And those who put value in your education says a lot about you. And I salute you for that. Thank you very much for what you guys do every day. And let's help and Walk around remembering when you hear people about no-till. Be careful how you judge them because these are ecological no-tillers. And they're growing. And they want the same thing as you want. So I want to thank you. You guys have an incredible day. And I'll be around to answer more questions. Okay? And I'm going to Huh? Okay, good. The Haney test. <laughs>
The heat test is at Ray Ward Lab. Write it down. And you're going to take it at six inch depth. Six inch depth. And then on YouTube, there is more on the Haney test. Dr. Haney's actually teaching it himself. You're going to take it like a regular soil test. Now, just to make it clear, if this is a squirt, if this is a field of 40 acres, say this is a big 40 acre field, just go around, take as many core samples as you can. Like this 40 acre, I'll take a 30 or 40 cores, make sure a five gallon bucket, that's one sample. That's 45 bucks a sample. That's $45 you'll ever spend. Because if somebody, some farmers say, well, that's a lot of money for a soil test. I said, don't call me. You don't want to save Taylor $30,000? Don't waste my time. How about $2.5 million? Yes, how about $2.5 million? So if you have, so you have to ask for report now. Remember, Ray Ward Lab, pay me test. If you do not ask, you get a regular soil test with a Haney test together. You get both. Yes, ma'am. Can you write down Ray Ward? Ray yeah, Ray Ward. Yes, Ray Ward Lab. It's the only lab right now that I feel comfortable because him and Rick talk all the time. Now, there's another lab kicking in. They're going to talk to you so they can collaborate and more um, calibrate the, the sample. It's the only lab that calibrates it to exactly Rick's test. If you do not use the right methodology, you're going to come up with the wrong answer. That's why I don't recommend every lab. I will not recommend a lab on my name. I will not do it. I have too much risk for my producers. It's got to be exact. You've got to follow the right methodology. So, I do several tests, but this one is very, very helpful. And it's real simple. When it tells you you're going to get a university soil test, it's going to give you a value. And it's going to do the Haney test, and it's going to tell you the nitrogen value. You follow Rick's value. Now, you're going to ask me, when do I take the test, right? Yeah. Real quick. If your corn's this big or your vegetables, you want to take this test in the spring. Why the spring? And you want to take it right next to the root. That's where the microbes are going. In the spring. Because this is for fertility. You want to know, now can you use this test to get a benchmark? Yes. But you're going to take the test every time, the same time, every year. Why? Thanks benchmark. Dave. This soil is incredibly sensitive. If I would have taken your blood sample right before you ate lunch and after lunch, would it have changed? Yes. That's how sensitive this test is. Be careful. Some people get lost. Well, it was said it was this this time, but I took it in the fall, but it's different now. Well, it better be. People get confused with the old soil test. It changes. Okay? Now, if you guys want to know more, there's Soil Health Academy. We teach three-day schools. And Soil Health, uh, it's just, we're going to post our calendar. We're going to post our calendar. And we're going to teach these three-day schools where you go to an intense school. Where we teach all this, how to design your own mixes, how to interpret the test. I can only give you so much. It's called Soil Health Academy. Give us until January, the end of January. We will have all the classes posted throughout the country. We will only take 30 to 50 students. That's all we can handle. Very hands-on. Thank you, guys. Thank you.